All right. Hello, everyone. So uh, we got a new course set up. We also have a new SCX24, the, uh, the sweet, sweet Jeep Wrangler JLUCRC. Right there. Lovely. Uh, so little update. Just recently burned up the motor on the C10 uh, when I built this new course actually in all of its splendor so you know here we are uh, waiting you know it's kind of crazy a few days ago when I built this first when I was working on this new course setup here you know inside because it's freezing cold out uh, I was crawling on it with the C10 and burned it up I it had a few issues though it was acting up because you can start to tell the power and the the rea reaction of the motor when the brushes start to fail, right? So, uh, finally failed where it's not running anymore. Let me see here. I think... Uh, one second. I'm looking to see if I can find the motor. I thought I had it, but I guess I don't. But anyways, you know, you've probably seen them before. They all look the same. Uh, anyways, burn the motor up on that, so I'm going to get a new motor for this and do some things. Uh, when I order my motor, though, I'm going to be ordering upgrade parts for everything. Like, I've never used anything aftermarket uh, other than the Emacs servos, which are already, I already put an Emacs servo in that. I ran it maybe three times stock, and uh, you know, once you put the Emacs servo in there, not only for the weight gain, uh, but just also for the the very it holds lines much much stronger. You know, it's it it stays where you put it on the lines you choose, much better. So, and there is even better you know quality servos you can get that are probably way more uh, ideal even than the Emacs. But, you know, I just, I get a four pack for like $20, I think. And I actually had the Emacs servo go bad in the deadbolt when I put it in it. Because I've had this for years now. So, you know, I put a, a stock motor and a second Emacs servo in that already. But uh, this one will be a motor now. And then who knows what that one. I already put an Emacs servo in it, though. But uh, anyways, enough waffling about. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and do a crawl with the deadbolt and the Jeep. Uh, real quick, I want to show you, so the ending point on this course, you know, you go around and up a little bit of an incline to park off on the last spot. Let me go ahead and show you what's going on with that. Okay, so here we have the C10 showing us where once you come up through here and around and down, this is where you have to stop. Most likely, everything will, uh, well, the C10 is just well balanced, but with the long body in the front, it's hard to flip that over. But most of them will flip off like that. Uh, you know, I haven't done a lot of testing. I, it is possible to stop them on there, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we're all set up. I found that motor, by the way. I had pulled the sticker off of it because it's bad, but anyways... Let's go ahead and we're going to run the deadbolt first because, you know, oldie but a goodie. It's our OG SCX24, so here we go. Now, I want you to pay attention to the hum. Let's see. Hear it? Before I even move, hear it? Now, that's how my C10 is too. Now, that's because the electronics in these... Uh, this is using, it comes with the AX4, I have my thumb over it, the AX4, the axial uh, transmitter and receiver all in one combo. So your electronic speed control and everything is in one thing. And so there's two lines here on this. We can go low road, high road. We'll go low road first because there is no back on this one, obviously. So we'll go low road, then high road. So, uh, okay, enough waffling about. Let's... Let's get this crawl on. All right. 
right. Ah, oh, we almost saved it. We almost saved it. All right. Let's get a little zoom in on the action here. See how that servo just moves the rear end of the uh, truck when the tires and, and the front are locked in something. Insane. Just insane, really. All right, guys, here we go. Coming up this little crevice here, this V. Very nicely, uh, you know, stock tires, stock all that stuff. All right, guys, here we go. Coming around the top. So we wanna go as far to the right as we can and bring it down. So see how I'm working my, my front to be positioned right inside that little knob. I don't want to have my high center back tire, which it looks like I'm going to. I'm probably going to flip. We'll see. Oh, okay. So almost landed it. Almost landed it. All right, guys. So here I'll, here I'll quiet. There's like almost nothing to the Jeep. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, <clears throat> this is the radio. Four channel. Uh, very interesting. The lights off, on, and flash. See how they're flashing? There's on. Off. But that's also center, left, and right on your third channel, so you could put rear steer. Channel four, if you hit it, it takes a servo from one way to all the way to the other. So basically, they've set us up to be able to hook up two servos. Uh, you could either do rear steer or you could do a snowplow. Up and down with this one and then center left and right with that one. Anyways, uh, we'll talk more about that later. Let's go ahead and get this crawl on. 